So if you want to just start with uh, describing who you are, how you became an artist, and just all the background stuff. Cool. No worries. Um, well, yeah, my name's Tony White. I am a watercolorist from Australia. Um, and I guess I've been painting and drawing most of my life. I did, um, I did stop for a while there um, in my teen years when I sort of played music and taught guitar and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I still sort of play music now a couple of times a month. I still do gigs and just play and sing songs, which was great the other day with my um, with that <clears throat> throat. Um, but uh, I just got right back into painting probably about 10 years ago and sort of never looked back. And oh, that's pretty much it. There's not really much more to it. It's just uh, the background has always, always done it. There was an old lady helped me when I was a teenager. She uh, she was from England and she had a lot of um, uh, a lot of background in the the pure watercolor side of things and and she taught me a lot and um, yeah I've taken that into my career now I suppose yeah so yeah so fun <laughs> okay yeah. awesome so what kind of art do you create? Uh, oh, excuse me, primarily landscape um, impressionistic style. Uh, landscape paintings. Um, I'm not into hyperrealism or anything like that. I just, you know, my opinion on that, and bear in mind, it's just my opinion, everybody. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it, my opinion of that is it's just, if, take a photograph, you know, like it's, it's <laughs> something that, it already exists. You don't need to recreate it exactly how it looks. I mean, I admire the people who can do it. I admire their patience and their skill, but it doesn't scream art to me. It's got to move you, you know, like it's got to have some kind of mood and atmosphere and um, all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I just try to create moody, impressionistic sort of paintings. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, and it, it's such a different kind of point of view. A lot of artists, they either have your point of view or the one to where it has to look just like the reference photo or it has to look so real. And then there are yeah. people like, the, and that's like person B and then person A is over here. Like, yeah. like it's got to be creative. It's got to be something from your imagination. It's got to be that's like... That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Like I always say that ref references, whether, whether you be painting on location or using a photo or anything like that. References are just that. They're references. So yeah. use them to put your main big shapes in and, and go for it. But if you, if you feel like it needs, you know, a red garbage bin somewhere, put a red garbage bin somewhere. You know, it doesn't <laughs> matter. <bin>. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what was the tipping point that took you from hobby to professional artist? Uh, well, I was working in a bank. I uh, worked in IT for a bank for 10 years and that's enough to pretty much sap the life out of you, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I know people, old work friends that are still there and have been there for decades and I, I, don't, I don't get it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I was working in a bank and um, I actually started giving workshops just at my local art society. Um, they asked me to do it once and I said, yeah, and I, I loved it. And I just kept developing those contacts and things for getting more and more workshops and that's kind of the impetus of um of me just saying that no, one day I'm, I'm out i'm quitting and uh much to my wife's dismay at the time um she's like what are you doing what are you what, what, what are you doing you're going to paint full time what mm -hmm. um and uh, to which i said well yeah and uh making it work and it's only about 18 months into it so far and it's uh, it's going from strength to strength. It's still not where I want it to be, but, um, but yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so cool. So what makes up your typical work day? How many hours do you spend painting? Uh, painting, not enough due to the little kids uh, being around. Um, but pro I probably paint for about two hours a day. But I do a lot of prep in that time as far as, uh, you know, resources. I do a lot of, e a lot of emailing. I do a lot of uh, the admin side of things, um, you know, your social media stuff, which I'm not that great at yet. I'm trying to get better. Um, now, and all, all, all of sort of preparations for painting, doing little sketches and doing the drawings up, ready to go paint. And uh, But, yeah, on average, I'd probably paint around two to three hours a day. Two to three hours? That's more. hardly at all, yeah. I know, I know. I wish it was more. Um, I What I have to do 
is start coming here at night in at night time when I'm tired and just pay when I'm tired. <laughs> and, uh, but um, but yeah, at the moment it's all just during the day when I can get a free moment away from the kids. Are you are they homeschooled or? No, no. Um, the my oldest actually just started kindy today, so oh. she's got her first day of school today. But um, they yeah, the other one's only she's four and a half, and the other one's only eighteen months old. So oh my gosh, um, yes, they're still little little kitties. So. Yes, they are. So you do a lot of video because like you, you you sent me a yeah. video to watch um, when you yeah. requested to be on here, and so mm. I was like, okay, I'm interested in that. Like, tell me about your video background cool. and what and why you make so, videos. Yeah, right. So it's I, I just I like teaching. My 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 sort of um, my bread and butter, if you like, is is teaching and um, and selling paintings, of course. But um, teaching is what I really love, and whether it be uh, workshops or via YouTube or anything like that. Um, I, I just love doing it. I just love the communication side of it. The instant feedback you get from things like YouTube um, mm -hmm. is, is great. That uh, video I sent you was an episode of the TV show Colour in Your Life that I, uh, I filmed up in Sydney uh, back in December. Um, it's only been on air for a couple of weeks. It's got lots of views. It's uh, Yeah, it's yeah. really good. And... Um, you know, I just like that sort of immediate communication side of things. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you create these videos, like to help promote your art brand, or yeah, just yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah it, it's all just promotion. I mean, everything's yeah. everything's promotion. These little, I uh, do do some little snippets and things just to, um, yeah, as you know, like little videos really help Instagram following all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of. A lot of little things I try and do to, to build awareness up, I suppose, um, and to build build a name. But I'm, um, but yeah, that uh, there's a good thing about all the videos is it's it's online, it's everywhere. You can send it internationally. You know, I've got workshops coming up in uh, Europe later on this year, and and a lot of those get booked out from just from those videos and things. So it uh, all really helps. Yeah, video is great. Yeah, um, so, can you talk us to your, through your painting process? Are there any methods or techniques that you use? Um, well, the biggest thing I've I've learned with watercolor, watercolor in particular, is that you've got to paint quickly. You have to do it quickly. You have to respond to your subject, put it down, and that's it. Yeah. So, there's no real labouring over it. A lot of people think of watercolor as you know that traditional, it looks like it was on the, you know, like a, a picture on the cover of a Hallmark card from 1960 something. It's just that weak, insipid little children's book illustrations, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. People think of watercolour as that, as a pretend medium, so to speak. Um, but it's not. You, it, it's actually very, very strong and... A lot of people think that it fades and all that kind of stuff, but it, it just doesn't anymore. You know, everything's on 100% cotton paper, uh, acid-free paper, um, perennial pigments. Everything's the same. It's, it's, it's equal. But you've got to – so many people approach it because you can't fix mistakes, so to speak, you know, in general. You can do things, but, um, but yeah, you've got to just do it immediately. Just get stuck into it and don't worry about it. And that's that's the biggest thing I try and sort of teach at my workshops is just just have a go. You know? Yeah, yeah. So so you teach workshops. So what, what do you teach yeah. at your workshops? Um, uh, basically, how to approach a subject. So if you if you've got a scene, say in a landscape painting, the street scenes are a particular thing that um, that trip people up because you're dealing with man-made objects, so they've got to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's a landscape purely just, you know, trees and roads and water and things like that, then, you know, it's you can kind of mess around with it a bit. But with streetscapes in particular, um, you know, figures, cars, buildings, um, I just try and teach a way of simplifying everything. Instead of seeing a whole bunch of buildings, all you're doing is seeing a box, you know, like you're... And figures, they're just a, they're just an upside well, right way up, depending which way you look at it. It's just, it's a carrot, you know, like the, yeah. it's a tri long triangle. So it's it's just that um, way of simplifying everything that I really try to push into workshops, and people get really good success out of it as well. Yeah, oh cool, awesome. Yeah. What is one thing you don't like to paint without? 
Uh, good quality paper. Okay, yeah. What's your good We've, quality paper? What's your go-to? Uh, Saunders Waterford um, rough paper, 300 gram, um, or Archer's paper. They're both equivalent in my view. I'm used to Saunders more so these days. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you just cannot get a result. Like paints and brushes, you can kind of get away with, but with uh, especially brushes. But with paper, you just can't. You can get the cheapest horrible paper or even stuff that's just not quite there. It's halfway in the middle. You just get no results. It just doesn't behave like it should. So paper, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I just started getting into colored pencils and yeah. the, the rough paper as opposed to the really smooth paper, I'm like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, this is just night and day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I mean, you can do more things with it. You know, that's just that versatility factor for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Are there any art lessons you've learned the hard way? Mm. Yeah. Um, don't get caught up in art prizes and competitions. Okay. So uh, the one thing that I would suggest is to keep art prizes as something that you do. They're just a bit of fluff on the side. It's just nothing. You know, it's just something that you, you enter if you want to. But don't place so much stock in them. Don't place so much importance. It doesn't matter. It's a title. But ultimately, the result is based on somebody else's opinion of yeah. the work that's there. So it, I found it really disheartening the first time I entered a local art prize uh, a few years ago now. And I thought I'd done great work. And even even going around um, around the exhibition at the time, like on the, the judging night and things like that, um, we were looking around going, Jesus there's some rubbish here. There's some rubbish. I, you know, I might be in with a shot. And um, it's just not, it just doesn't matter. And the judge just came up and, you know, awarded it to someone else. I don't even remember what it was, but, but just the, the lack of acknowledgement, acknowledgement doesn't actually mean anything. So don't get, don't get so focused on competitions. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's art. It's not a competition. You've got to do it for yourself and do your own thing. But a lot of, I see a lot of people getting caught up in it for sure. For sure, yeah, and a lot of times when I like the the approach that I took mostly was mm. to go where other artists are not. So I mean, yeah. they're, they're the obvious things you can enter a show, you can enter this and do that. But like, yeah. oh, there's so many artists there, and like, and I don't know if my, if it's my just like not want for a competition, <laughs> like, yeah, but yeah. it's also just like I want to stand out in a room yeah. where there are no other artists, and so that's where that's I want right. to go. Yeah, exactly right, and and you've just got to just got to push yourself and, and, and paint, you know, if you're a painter, you've just got to paint and the rest of it will take care of itself and you'd you know, enter those things for exposure, things like that. That's cool. But you know, they're not the be all and end all. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you have a favorite past project? Um, yeah, probably. I, I, I think the first time I started writing for Australian artist magazine, um, which is, uh, got approached about a year and a half ago now and been writing for them pretty much non-stop since then. Um, had a painting featured on the cover back in, I think it was November's issue last year. And writing for those guys is really, really good because it's, it gives you a bit of validation, you know, like it, it means you're on the right track, especially when you're, you're going from um, an amateur artist into a professional full-time artist and you know earning money and making a career for yourself um then you've got to you've got to just take all those little wins and those little wins like your your magazine articles you know you've got something published you, you've got to submit yourself to it so then go for it and and getting published is an amazing feeling and going into a, a news agency and seeing your picture on the front of a magazine it's, it's quite surreal um, and it okay, means that the hard work's paying off. And so I really like that. And the first time I ever uh, did a workshop alongside people who are my idols in painting, like the, they were fellow tutors in, this, in these cases. That's really strange doing that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those things are, are great. And, um, but yeah, they're, they're things that stand out to me for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, what are your future art plans and goals? What, what's, uh, 
at the future stuff. I'm doing a, I'm writing at the moment and filming an online course. Oh, okay. Um, uh, watercolor fundamentals online course. Um, it'll be fairly comprehensive. Um, so that's a big one coming up. So that's probably halfway done. So that should be published in the next couple of months. Um, that's a really big thing. Uh, it's a lot of work, as you know, filming things yeah. and doing things so they don't look ratty, you know? Yeah, so, I, I actually was just yeah. editing a mural video that I had filmed, yeah. and it was just like, I took like an hour and a half worth, and I trimmed it down to about 45 minutes just to, yeah. just to get all the good stuff and to take out all yeah. the filler. That's right, and it, it's hard. It, it takes a lot of time to do that. That's the thing. Like, I can't imagine these, these people that sit in edit bays and, and edit feature films, you know, like, like yeah. they, they, their brains just must be mush. I kind of <laughs> like um, it though. Like the editing process, I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, it's good when you, it's good when you nail it and you go, yeah. oh, that looks really good. And you, you're just an idea comes to you. And yeah. you know, it's like the first time you use jump cuts and you go, oh, cool. I know how to do that now. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just that on, and uh, lots of workshops coming up and, uh, and, writing for not only Australian Artists Magazine, I'm doing some writing for British publications as well. So you're a writer and, and an artist? Yeah, just when we say writing, it's all, it's just all about art and articles and tutorials and things like that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But, gotcha. um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, just busy, busy, make, you know, making phone calls and hustling, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So is there any advice that you would give to artists who want to make art their full-time career but just don't know where to start? Oh, yeah. Um, it's a hard one because you, you, need to, you need to pay the bills, you know. You can't make art if you've got no electricity for lights to see what you're doing. So yeah. um, you've got to pay the bills. However, life's short. You've got to get stuck in and just bite the bullet and do it. Don't worry about what other people say. People will go, or your, or your, your friends who are non-arty and don't understand will say, what are you doing? That's crazy. What's, what, you've, you've got an, an income and a mortgage and all that sort of stuff. But, and that's cool. But life is short. We don't know what's around the corner. Um, I think it's a better message to send to your kids. If you've got kids, better, better message to send to your kids to don't be scared to do what you want to do in life. It's... It's short, um, and yeah, just get stuck in. Don't worry about anything. Just just go for it. And uh, the only way you can start is to start. It's the only way it's ever going to happen. And you know what? Nothing's forever. It does. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you've got to try. You've got to give it a crack. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Very yeah. inspirational. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm uh, Tony Robbins like that. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'll start jumping into a cold pool and all that sort of stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, he does that, like, every morning, right? Uh, crazy person. I need crazy. some bigger teeth and all that. Motivated, a bigger jawline, <laughs> line, Tony Ross. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for coming on and chatting with us and answering all my questions. Uh, uh, no problem. That's that okay. It's a pleasure. Yeah, for sure. I know that several people on here, I can see in the comments too, like one person was like, this is great. And it's just, I think cool. it's just so nice just to hear from working artists because there are so many people and I used to be one of them that just like yeah. didn't know that being a working artist was possible. And so that's, that's right. why I started yeah. this. And so chatting with yep. you all the way over in Australia, it's what, yeah. 6 p.m. where you are? No, oh, it's, no, uh, no, that's you. It's okay. about 11, I'm coming up on 11.30 Tuesday morning. So yeah, and it's Monday night here for me. <laughs> yeah, that's Crazy. right. But yeah. Um, yeah, you've just, just got to get stuck in and do it. And you've got to do the work as well. You've got to, yeah. you can't just sort of quit your job and paint and expect it all to happen. You've yeah. got to, you know, you've got to use this thing called social media and the internet. You know, we've, we've got it so much better in ways than, than artists have ever had it as far as getting yourself out there. Um, so you've got to use it. And if you don't use social media and the internet to your advantage, then you're just going to be left behind. Yeah, true. So yeah. true. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for, again for coming on and talking to me, and I hope you have a Pleasure. great night. We'll keep in touch here on Instagram. Yeah, definitely, Andrew. Thank you very much, and thanks to listeners and subscribers as well. Thank you. No problem. See ya. Peace. <laughs>